Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be breaking down the time complexity, big of and log in into an easier way to understand, hopefully. There's not going to be any intense math formulas in this video, so don't freak out and stay tuned. I've been thinking about how to break it down so that it's actually easy to understand. And I think the best way is to first of all forget about the time complexity, forget the end, forget the log, and forget everything, and then slowly work our way up. If you're here, I think you probably know that some of the algorithms that have a time complexity of O and log n is the merge sort and the quick sort. They're both big O of n log n because even though they're different algorithms, they're both based on the idea of divide and conquer. The merge sort basically break the array until it's of size 1 and then merge it all up, while the quick sort on the other hand actually sorts from the top down, so from the size n until it's of size 1. Now, to make it more clear and to kind of layer base, let's look at this example. Let's say that the size of the array is 8. In the first iteration, we'll be splitting it into half, so we'll be getting two arrays of size 4. Then we continue to split it up again to get the size 2 and 2. Then this becomes 1 1. This tree structure is the typical scenario of a merge sort and the best in the average case of the quick sort. For this video, I'll be using the quick sort to visualize how to calculate the time complexity just because I think it's easier to follow. From here, the first thing that we want to know is the time complexity of each level. When we calculate time complexity, we don't use numbers, right? So instead of the number 8 here, I'm just going to refer to this 8 as n, which is the size of the array. In the first iteration or the top level here, we have a pivot and we'll have to compare every element to the pivot so that we know which element is larger or smaller than the pivot. Therefore, the time complexity for this level is n. Now, in the second iteration, we'll be getting two arrays of size 4 and 4 or basically two arrays of size n divided by 2. To sort this subarray, we have to check every element in this subarray to the pivot, just like what we did for the first level, therefore the time complexity for this is n divided by 2. However, don't forget that we have two arrays of size n over 2. So the total time complexity for this level is n over 2 times 2, which is basically n. In the third iteration, we simply repeat what we just did. This subarray is split into another half, so the array of size n over 2 divided by 2 is going to give us an array of size n over 4. From only 2 arrays, we now have 4 arrays. You've probably guessed it by now, the total time complexity for this level is going to be n over 4 times 4, which is basically n. For the next iteration, we basically do n over 4 divided by 2, which, will, which is basically n over 8 and a total of 8 arrays, so the time complexity for this level is also n. Now we know that the time complexity for each level is n, but how do we know how many times do we have to repeat this? First, let's look at the size of the array of each level. You'll probably notice that there's a pattern here. The topmost level is basically the size of the array, and it can be written in another form, which is n over 2 to the power of 0. This is basically n over 1, and n over 1 is n. In the second level is n over 2, which can be written as n over 2 to the power of 1. Then for the third level, as you've guessed it, I think, n over 4 is simply rewritten as n over 2 to the power of 2. Then n over 8 is basically n over 2 to the power of 3, and so on. Now from here, what we want to know is at what level will the size of the array equals to 1. Here we know that n over 2 to the power of 0 gives us the array size n, right? So this is basically n over 2 to the power of 0 equals n. If we translate our question into a math equation, we'll be getting something like n over 2 to the power of x equals to 1, where we want to find the value of x. Now let's try solving this equation. 
The first thing that I'll do is times 2 to the power of x to both sides. And now we have n equals 2 to the power of x. If we do a log function on both sides, this equation magically turns into x equals log 2n, or what we usually call log n. Our x here is basically the number of times we have to repeat until the size of the array is equals to 1. And we know that the time complexity of each level is n. With this, we now know that the time complexity of this algorithm is big O of n times big O of x, where x is equals to log n. Therefore, if we just plug this x into the equation, we'll be getting big O of n times big O of log n, which is equal to big O of n log n. And that's it for this video. If you like this video, check out this playlist of basic algorithms that I've created. If you find this video helpful, do share it with your friends. It'll help my channel out a lot. See you again next time. Bye!